Mark Rogers, TV Talk and USC Football. We are the voice of college football, so please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the audio versions instead, you go to Google Play, Podbean, iTunes, and Stitcher, and just search Mark Rogers TV. We've got Scott Schrader on the line and also Drew Krinsky from USC Insider. They help us out on the Trojans on a regular basis. All right, guys, appreciate you jumping on board. And, Scott, I think we'll talk to you because uh, the big news right now is obviously the recruiting trail and what's happening there. Uh, the uh, numbers don't matter right now, but just to set the record straight, number five in the Pac-12 and number 43 nationally, according to 247. Uh, your thoughts about uh, where things stand and the big targets upcoming? Well, as far as rankings are concerned, um, I, I to be honest with you, I, I, I think relatively nothing about recruiting rankings in, in May, but um, sure. you know, USC we USC has four commits, so um, you know, considering they're going to be taking twenty-five guys in this recruiting class, um, yeah, I, I, yeah. Anyway, me, me, and looking at rankings this time of year is like fingernails on a chalkboard. So we can talk about the. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not uh, emphasizing the recruiting rankings. I was just throwing that out yeah. there and saying it means nothing. But uh, yeah, just uh, take us through what uh, what you've got thus far and and who the big targets are. Well, as, as far as the bigger targets that, that they have, you know, if, if you want to look at position-wise, you know, quarterback, their, their, their top guy right now is Jaden Daniels from Cajon High School, um, which is an hour. Um, he's got offers from most of the Pac-12 schools, some SEC schools, some ACC schools. Um, and it's it's going to be it's going to be difficult for USC in the quarterback situation in 2019 with JT Daniels, you know, a freshman, more than likely going to end up with a starting job at some point. And then you have a two thousand you have two of the top 2020 quarterbacks, and Bryce Young from Modern Day, DJ from uh, Ugalele from St. John Bosco, and one of those guys is going to probably commit next month. So. It's going to be interesting to see how things play out with the 2000. That's their top guy is Jaden Daniels. Running back wise, they're 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 one of their top guys is from Lawndale High School, Jordan Wilmore. Um, he's he's a he's about five nine, five ten, two hundred and maybe five ten pounds. Really powerful. Um, looks a lot like Stephen Carr running the ball. Um, another guy who's really fast. He's a one of the fastest guys in, in California is Keenan Kristen from Madison High School in San Diego. Then there's another running back, Zach Charbonnet from Oaks Christian. Um, so the, the, their top running, there's some running backs they're looking at from across the country, uh, John Emery from Louisiana and, and some other guys. But those three guys are their, kind of their, their top guys right now running back. Wide receiver, you've got a, a really good back. Basketball player and football player in Drakenden from Moore Park High School. Uh, he's his interest in USC is real high. All these guys' interest in USC is really high. Also, I'm I'm kind of connecting the dots with their interest and and, and how good they are. Um, and you have Kyle Ford, who's a really good baseball player too, which he's playing baseball right now for Orange Lutheran. Uh, he he's probably the top wide receiver on the West Coast. Um, and then they're looking for some speed guys, and I'm not really sure where they're, they're going to be going with that. But one, they also have a commit in Munir McLean from Jay Sarah High School in San Juan Capistrano, which is about an hour south of Los Angeles. So those are kind of their playmakers. And the offensive line-wise, I'm out here at Narbonne High School right now looking at Jonah Tawanu. Um, he's about 6'5". How, how, how big is Jonah? About two, two, 300, 300, 300 pounds. Um, Jason Rodriguez is committed to USC. He's even bigger than that. Um, and he, there's, there's a really good offensive tackle from Michigan, Devontae Dobbs. So there, there, there's some guys for the offensive line. Um, I, I don't know if that's what you're looking for, but that's, you know, I, I thought we were going to be doing a Q and a, so I wasn't really prepared to, to go down the list, but on defense, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I know all the players, so it's not like, but, uh, on the defensive line, there's, there's a kid who I really like a lot. Drake Jackson. Thank you, Michael, uh, from Centennial high school. 
this is a big time player. Um, there's a kid from Nevada, Trevin Maya, uh, another defensive end, not highly ranked, moved from Hawaii in January to, to the sister who has a husband who's going off to Afghanistan. Um, defensive tackles. There's a kid, Sama Pama from Hawaii. Fatui Tui Tele. You're going to probably hear me say a lot of Polynesian names because <laughs> USC is recruit, recruiting a large number. Um, he's a five-star from Hawaii. Tui Tele is. Um, so those are kind of – there's 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 other guys too. But with, with those positions, USC really starts – most schools start figuring that stuff out in January after these guys come to their camps and they get to see them in person, uh, which they're doing now – College coaches are off at high schools evaluating kids their spring practices, and then they'll get to see them at their camps in June as well. Um, cornerbacks, Chris Steele from St. John Bosco is their top guy. Um, Max Williams from Sarah High School in Gardena. Mike Hale Wright is is he might I he's he's right up there as my top cornerback that I've seen uh, from Valencia High School, and that's about. There's Six Flags Magic Mountain, which is about an hour from Los Angeles. Um, so I mean, I I could keep going, but I, do, do we do we have any questions? I because I'm I'm gonna have to leave here shortly to get some interviews with these these kids that just finished. Very good. We're on the line with Scott Schrader from uh, USC Insider. Basically, everything I could throw at you at this point, Scott, is is a lot of comments about USC football. Not a whole lot to chew on. People talking about uh, uh, is the team going to be able to protect the ball this year because they no longer have Fumble Jones or Sam Turnover Darnold. So, so there's not a whole lot of questioning here. There's a lot of shots at USC and the weakness of the Pac-12, and, and USC probably going to to win the South because it's not a good division. So, I don't know if you have any thoughts about any of that. But, uh, doesn't really question. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, the Pac-12. You know, the Pac-12 is a is a different type of football than you're gonna that you're gonna find. Um, you know, in, in other conferences and, and that you have really good quarterbacks, offenses are dynamic. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to see hand off, you know, guys, the quarterbacks hand the ball off to, it's not going to be your, your typical, typical pro style NFL offense. Most of them, uh, USC runs more of a pro style, but you know, it's a different conference and whether you're not. You know, I guess how people would look at that, but uh, so it's not like the Pac-12 will be a weak conference. But see, having a, a new starting quarterback, I'm sure, what's going to be happening there? Um, although JT Daniels is, is unlike any incoming freshman quarterback I've ever, um, but you know, I'm not. I'm not thinking USC is going to have a great season this year, but you know, whether the Pac-12 is great or not, USC will be a a national championship contending team. Now. Um, you know, you'll have guys that are coming back. You'll have a quarterback that's coming back. You'll have offensive linemen that have grown up. Uh, defensive linemen they brought in a last year more this year. So, so you know, USC is getting really strong. They have a lot of talent. Um, for protecting the ball, you know, that's a big issue. You know, the offensive line last job, but I think there's some younger players who are more talented, but they just needed experience. So kind of got that at a spring camp now on the belt, and they've, they've got a fall camp coming up as well. So it's, it's, there's a lot of question marks, but at the same time, there were a lot of questions uh, when – Carson Palmer, and then those guys left, um, and Matt Leiner took over as the starting quarterback. So you never know what's going to happen. Hey, Scott, can you hear me okay? I'm going to run after Jonas Taunu right now. Okay. And get an interview. Thanks, thanks for stopping by, I appreciate Scott. I appreciate it. that. All right. All right, thank you. Scott Schrader of USC Insider. We also have Drew Krinsky on the line. Unfortunately, uh, the audio not the greatest with Scott on the line. We will get uh, a better connection with Scott in the next few weeks and have him on to talk more recruiting and uh, get his take on the quarterback situation as we get ready for JT Daniels' appearance on campus in August. Uh, and 
he's on campus, but in terms of uh, practicing with a full squad, and of course, we're going to get glimpses of him practicing with uh, uh, the core units uh, that he's going to work with on a regular basis, the wide receivers in particular, in the next few weeks. And uh, we got Drew Krinsky on the line from USC Insider to talk uh, personnel as we get you set for the 2018 season and try to break down as many positional units as we can possibly get to, and we should be able to get to all of them concerning the Trojans. So, Drew... As always, uh, appreciate you jumping on. Uh, running backs without Ronald Jones. Uh, Stephen Carr is obviously the headliner. Uh, could not practice much in the spring, if at all, from what I understand. So your thoughts, if you can take us through the running backs and how deep of a group, talented of a group, and how secure is this unit for this season? Yes, yeah, so you're right. He wasn't there this spring. He had an injury he was dealing with that could be a longer-term injury. Hopefully not. I saw him on campus. He told me, I'll be back. I'll be back. Don't worry. But we'll see. But in the spring, still, without Stephen Carr, I was impressed. They had Vivai Malapai, who came in, I think he's two classes ago. He's from Hawaii, was committed to Oregon, and then flipped on National Signing Day. And then they also have Aka Cedric Ware, who was uh, same class as Ronald Jones, both from Texas. And both those guys really showed up this spring. Vivai is a, a shiftier, quick back. Knows how to break the tackle, get away from defenders, and he showed some really. He showed glimpses of being capable to make some long runs. And then Ak Cedric wears not a big guy, but bigger, and he can kind of power through the offensive line. And we saw him just bolos through this spring and get some pretty big gains as well. So that's optimistic if Stephen Carr is unhealthy. But if he is healthy, watch out. Stephen Carr is one of the most dangerous running backs in. Yeah, I'm going to say in the nation, I mean, I've heard people say that, oh, he could be a Heisman if he's healthy. He can catch the ball, run the ball, shifty, strong, quick, and he knows how to make big gains. So Stephen Carr has the potential to be one of the top running backs in the nation. Drew Krinsky on the line from Trojan Insider. Uh, stops by on a regular basis to get us straight on a USC football. The Trojans, of course, uh, coming off a Pac-12 championship, their first in nine years. Uh, not good enough, though, for many no. USC fans, as you well know, Drew. So let me ask you this. It sounds as though in listening, not just between the lines, uh, you've told me pretty much straight out, Scott, in, in listening to his uh, dissertation just a few minutes ago and listening to what I see from USC fans online, somewhat throwing in the towel for this year, thinking, okay, maybe we win uh, the Pac-12 South. We should. We've got the most talented team. But beyond that, it's really difficult to project this team with a new quarterback in doing some some real elite-type damage this year. We're trying to get this program and this team set maybe for 19. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not throwing the flag in yet. JT Daniels, we still don't know what we're going to get out of him, but from what we hear – in college, I mean, in high school, they said he had an NFL brain, an NFL arm, and he's going to be able to make these passes at USC. And he, we haven't seen him play yet, but just being there, you could tell that he has that strong mentality. And I think with him and his teammate Amon Ross, St. Brown coming, you have Tyler Vaughns, Michael Pittman to work with as wide receivers, Daniel Imater Bebe. You have a better offensive line, I feel, than you had last year. He'll have time. It's possible the offense could be just as good as last year's because Darnold struggled last year. I mean, they made it to the Cotton Bowl with no – a lot of the wins weren't – they weren't convincing. Darnold threw a lot of interceptions. He was off and on. Obviously, he's capable of making great passes, but so is JT. So I feel that you could have a very similar team, but the defense, I feel, is better this year than last year too. So that's always a factor. I, don't, I wouldn't throw the talent yet. They could go pretty far. Okay, USC fans, this is the place to be to uh, catch up with USC football as we talk the national scene every day. But um, bring on Drew Krinsky on a regular basis from Trojan Insider to talk up USC football. We will break down the positions uh, all through the rest of the summer and anything that happens concerning USC football. Of course, the recruiting update we just received from Scott Schrader, uh, who will also join us on a regular basis as well to keep up with the recruiting for 2019 that's shaping up pretty well. Low in numbers right now, but a lot of top targets out there that will be had. Um, Drew, as you look at the wide receivers, uh, deep bunch, talented bunch, uh, what, what do you have for us there? Definitely talented, and then you also have some younger and experienced guys, but Michael Pittman and Tyler Vaughns are your two big names. 
they came in two years ago and they're Tyler Vaughn is pretty much a star. Everything they threw at him last year, he was able to catch it. I think has the best hands USC's seen in a while. And Michael Pittman is a bigger wide receiver who can get those balls in the air. But this year coming in, we haven't seen him yet. He's coming in the same time as JT, his teammate, Amon Ross St. Brown. Super explosive, great route runner. We expect him to fulfill the role of slot receiver. And him and JT had a great connection in high school. And usually you kind of see those carry out in the college when you bring two quarterbacks and a wide receiver on the same team. And we expect them to connect this year. So he's obviously talented there. Valus Jones is another guy who never really showed much, had trouble catching the ball. This spring he's been able to catch the ball. And he runs pretty quick. I don't know. I think it's like 4-4 four, four, or 3-5 four, speed around there. Very fast wide receiver, and now that he can catch the ball, we expect him to be a threat this season. So definitely I expect an improvement in the wide receiver front. You lost Deontay Burnett, who expected to go early third round, didn't end up going that early, but had ball control issues. I don't know if you saw in the Cotton Bowl game against Ohio State. He fumbled twice, so they won't have him this year. The Vaughns, Pittman, St. Brown. And uh, I think it's a more experienced group. So basically, let's see, Tyler Vaughn's, uh, yeah, 57 catches, 809 yards, 14-plus per reception, five touchdowns. Michael Pippen Jr., 23 receptions, over 17 yards per catch, two touchdowns, 404 yards there. Uh, do we have uh, much a tight end coming back uh, to get excited about? Yes. Uh, we have a tight end who we have two. Tyler Petit and Daniel Imortabebe. Daniel's the guy who people are saying could be one of the top two NFL tight end prospects. Big, big guy. But he's been battling injuries throughout his career, and he's never really stayed consistent on the field. And that obviously hurts chemistry with the quarterback, and he's hard to find that way. But we feel that if he can get playing, he's going to be very dangerous. He's very tall, very tall and very big. He's kind of like your Gronkowski-style guy where you can just kind of lob it up to him and watch him make the play, but he needs to stay healthy. And then Tyler Petit's just, he's been there for a while. He's been making plays for USC for years. He's consistent. I wouldn't say he's the most talented guy. His footwork isn't great. We've seen him stumble on his own feet just five yards from a touchdown with no one in front of him. So that's always something you don't want to see, but he'll make the plays for you. So he's consistent on that front, but Daniel's the real guy you need healthy. Yeah, and you would think uh, Petit having the uh, the talent that you mentioned in regards to NFL potential, uh, both these guys can improve yeah. dramatically on their 2017 numbers. For Petit, 23 receptions, 13 yards per catch, three touchdowns. Uh, Imator Bebe, one of the fine, fine names in college football, of course. Yes. Uh, eight catches for a buck 44. So he's getting down the field at 18 yards per catch. So more out of the tight ends expected this year, especially with a quarterback who typically lean on the tight ends for a little security blanket uh, down the seams to help him out there. And a big target to uh, match up against uh, inferior foes in the uh, defensive backfield. Uh, let's see Drew Krinsky on the line from Trojan insiders. We have uh, struck up the live stream. We've got a number of people on the line we got a lot of comments here, Drew, but I don't know that I've got a whole lot to serve up. Again, it's a lot of Pac-12 bashing, a little USC bashing, wondering if you're going to be elite this year. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we know that the roster is strong. We know that the recruiting has been strong, but maybe the combination of youth and combination of uh, losing what you did in terms of marquee players last year with a new quarterback, regardless of who it is, I know USC fans wanted to be JT Daniels might be a little bit too much to ask, but Hey, you win the division and you're right there in a conference championship game. And uh, if you win one of the two big non-conference games being Texas and Notre Dame, then maybe there is a chance to sneak in. But uh, the conference championship is certainly a reasonable goal. I would think the North might be better than the South probably is Washington and Stanford. Both yeah. should be very, very strong. But to, to match up USC versus one of those two teams right now isn't necessarily what we need to do. 12 games of improvement plus a 13th game in the Pac-12 title game, this could be a completely different USC team than what we see the first month of the season. And they might be uh, ready to roll against a Washington or Stanford. 
uh, it should be a different team. And if JT Daniels especially has that, that much growth uh, to experience, uh, they, they could prove to be in the long run kind of similar to two years ago, not necessarily the best team of the conference the first month, but definitely the best team of the conference at the end of the season. Yeah, and uh, in terms of a transforming team, rebuilding process, there's a lot of that going on right now in the Pac-12. Get Kevin Sumlin in Arizona, Irm Edwards over at ASU, Chip Kelly at UCLA. So there's a lot of programs in the division that are, you know, that could take them a while to really kick off. They'll be learning new offenses. It'll be all different for them. So, you know, USC, while they're not, while it's obviously a whole new thing, losing Darnold, Rasheem Green, Chen Nwosu, guys like that, Ronald Jones, they're not alone here. And they have a lot of talent right. to back it up. Good stuff, Drew. Appreciate you stopping by. And uh, we will uh, tap you a number of times this summer to get a set for uh, August. And, uh, of course, that quarterback battle and the other positions and recruiting always going on. So, Drew Krinsky, USC Insider. Please follow him on Twitter and, and catch uh, the articles on USC Insider for the very best in USC football coverage. Drew, appreciate the time, and uh, you have a great uh, evening. Thank you, Mark. Have a good one. All right, we're going to stay on the line here and uh, bringing on Savannah Lee Richardson, talking Georgia football, Bulldog Illustrated. So look for the link. It's coming very soon. For those of you who subscribe to me on YouTube, uh, you've got the notification and we will be right back.